Now that we've seen some motivation for fuel automorphisms, it's time to begin developing the theory in earnest. So in any good first course in Galois theory, kind of the main result, the most important theorem presented in the class, in my opinion anyway, is the classical Galois correspondence. Now, this guy is a little bit complicated um, in that it takes a little bit of time to define it, and it takes even more time in order to develop it into a useful tool. It sort of takes some work. You have to build up some machinery before the classical Galois correspondence is A, understandable, and B, useful. So because of this, it usually takes a while to develop the correspondence in any first course in Galois theory. You usually spend a lot of time talking about related notions before you even see the correspondence. And this approach has its advantages, um, but I would like to do something different, which is to kind of very quickly define the correspondence up front. And that's what we're going to do in the next couple of videos, is just kind of get a first, and admittedly somewhat vague, definition of what the correspondence is. And I want to do this for two reasons, basically. One is that it'll give some kind of goalpost, um, some glimmer of hope to get through all of the formalism that we have to do in order to build up the correspondence. And two, it'll motivate uh, sort of a lot of the machinery that we have to build. So if I took the traditional route and um, developed all the theory first before defining the correspondence, I think that some of it would seem a little bit unmotivated. So instead, I'd like to define the correspondence first, albeit somewhat vaguely, so that all of the machinery has some better motivation. So that's what I want to do in the next few videos, is kind of give an approximation to the Galois correspondence. OK. So in this video, what we're going to do then is define two things, two things that we need in order to even talk about the correspondence. And those two things are field extensions and field automorphisms. So let's get to it. The first definition is as follows. A field extension is just a pair of fields, little k and big K, where little k is a subfield of big K. So in such a situation, one says that k is an extension of k. Big K is an extension of little k. And that makes sense, right? Because we're basically just saying that little k is just some small field inside the big field k. Let me also tell you the way this is often written, which is k over k, big k over little k. And this just means the above. So whenever someone writes k bar little k, or big k bar little k, it just means that big k is an extension of little k. And that's all that a field extension is. OK, so let's move on to the next definition, which is of a field automorphism. And that definition is as follows. Is as follows. Let's let k be a field. Then a field automorphism of k is just an invertible ring homomorphism from k to itself. So we can spell this out. This means that a field automorphism of k is a function sigma from k to itself, such that sigma is bijective. This is expressing the fact that sigma is invertible. And then sigma preserves algebraic structure. So sigma of a plus b is equal to sigma a plus sigma b. Sigma of a times b is equal to sigma a times sigma b. And sigma takes the identity of k to itself. And this is just expressing the fact that sigma is a ring homomorphism. OK, so that's what a field automorphism is. So we define field automorphisms. We've defined field extensions, and those are the two things we wanted to do in this video. In the next video, we'll see some examples.